Now back to the murder mystery of Eric Cross, the Michigan teen found dead on the side of the road. Hannah Garcia just confronted three of the people who police say are under a cloud of suspicion for different reasons. Even after 33 long years, the people of Vicksburg, Michigan have not forgotten Eric Cross. It's an uplifting thing to my spirit to know that so many people cared enough to come out and to be with us and to say the prayer that they still care. Nor has anyone here forgotten that whoever killed him has still not been caught. Thank you so We're much. Thank you for Christmas everything shopping. you're doing with them and everything. Yeah, yeah. And for being here yeah. tonight. That was so encouraging. If this vigil is any indication of how the people of Vicksburg, Michigan, feel about this case, it's pretty clear they want justice. And now it seems they might finally be about to get it, thanks to candlelight vigils like this one several months earlier to mark what would have been Eric's 49th birthday. There was a lot of media attention to that. And from that media attention, we got that phone call that we waited for, and it put the whole case into perspective and it hit information that we had always kept quiet, dead center, so we knew we were back on the road again. Does that mean arrests are coming? Well, it means we're going to go forward with this and we're going to be presenting it to the prosecutor. And the prosecutor is very excited about this case, very interested in this case. That break in the case, has it made up perhaps for the last three decades? The information we got was fabulous. It made the difference. This particular source of the information was just dead on. It solidified a lot of the information we had then. It made that crystal ball a lot more clear now, and it moved us closer to our target. The target, according to the sheriff, remains that group of teenagers in a car police believe dragged Eric hundreds of yards along the road, ran him over, and dumped his body in front of his home. The persons of interest we have today are the same persons of interest we had years ago. And their prime suspect, the one they believe drove the car, also remains Brent Spaulding. Since the incident, uh, he's had uh, numerous issues, uh, some substance abuse issues. He's managed to find his way in and out of the county jail. And recently, he was here just a couple of months ago serving a sentence. I tried to talk to Brent. And I catch a glimpse of him through the window after I ring the doorbell. Are you Brent Spaulding? Brent? Brent Spaulding? Please come out. Brent, it's Anna Garcia from Crime Watch Daily. We want to talk to you about the murder of Eric Cross. I know you're in there. I just saw you. You're in a bathrobe. But Brent doesn't respond. The whole town is pointing to you, Brent. I don't think he's going to come out. He's in there, though. Even though Spaulding has not been arrested in connection with the murder of Eric Cross, the 51-year-old is no stranger to the law. He has spent years in and out of prison for charges including domestic violence, assault on a police officer, and he's just been locked up after being arrested for drunk and disorderly conduct. Another main person of interest is still Amber Thomas, Brent's high school girlfriend, who cops say was also among the car full of kids they believe were involved in Eric's death. She has a very clear firsthand knowledge of what went on uh, that particular time. It would be nice to hear from her to get her side of the story before we proceeded on our assumptions. Amber is now married with children. Amber, yeah. hi. hi. Anna Garcia from Crime Watch Daily. Uh -huh. We'd like to talk to you about the Eric Cross case. Oh, no, that's okay. Thanks. But we'd really like to talk that's to you okay. about what happened that night, Amber. It seems the so-called conspiracy of silence is holding strong despite the recent break in the case. To this day, police say Amber continues to stonewall them about her knowledge of the events of that night. However, at one point, Crime Watch Daily discovered that she did seek counsel from an attorney. But a cloud of suspicion has hung over many others who had any contact with Eric on the night he was killed. Among them, Bill Cook, Eric's best friend, 
who went to that teenage drinking party with him hours before Eric was killed. Bill uh, was with the core group uh, earlier in the evening. And Eric's sister Jackie helps me contact him. Hello? Hi, Bill Cook. This is Anna Garcia from Crime Watch Daily. I'm here with Eric Cross's sister Jackie. How are you? Good. How are you? And I am so sorry I have not got back with you. The sound of silence has cracked. We are wondering what information you could share with us about the death of Eric Cross. Okay. I'm, uh, I'm with you on that. And after a 10-minute phone conversation, Bill agrees to meet me later that night to speak publicly on camera for the first time since Eric's death 33 years ago. Are you Bill? I am, ma'am. Hi, Anna Garcia. We spoke earlier. It's a pleasure. Thanks for walking over. Yes, ma'am. Bill is very emotional and weeps when I mention Eric's death. He's my best friend. And my, that's what the family said. My best friend. And although Bill insists, as he has from the beginning, that he had nothing to do with Eric's death, he still blames himself that it happened. He lost his life because I left him because I wasn't there to look out for him. Bill says they got separated at the lake house drinking party. So the last time you saw Eric Cross, where was he? Sitting in a lawn chair. And I said, Eric, I'm going swimming with... Uh, a girl? Yeah. Okay. He was okay. When you came back from swimming with the girl... He was gone. Eric was already walking home down the road toward his death. What do you think happened to him? <sighs> Ma'am, if I knew that, this would be a done and over scenario. Bill says he went to the home of his girlfriend who just happened to be Brent Spaulding's sister, Mae Britt. And Brent was home? Yes. Bill says he doesn't know what happened after that because he went to sleep for the rest of the night at the Spaulding house. I would never do that to my friend, and I would never allow anybody else to do it. But Bill has always been under suspicion because of his close Spaulding connection. I dated the sister of the person of interest. And so that's why she and others think you might know something? I believe so. And do you know anything? Absolutely not, ma'am. Few in Vicksburg believe him. How has the town reacted to you? They hate me. I've lost a lot of um, very key people in my life. With the cloud of uh, down over my head, um, I don't have them as friends anymore. You've lost your friends because of this? Yes, ma'am. And Bill says he's relieved to hear there's finally been a break in the case. Do you think maybe if the police ultimately do make an arrest, that maybe that will finally clear your cloud I in hope a way? So. I hope so. I really hope so, ma'am. Police say it won't be long. There is a light at the end of the tunnel, and we're certain it's not a train coming at us. But cops won't reveal what new information they have that makes them so confident of an imminent arrest. It's something we need to keep close to the vest until we uh, go public uh, with the whole event. And after 33 years, the capture of Eric's killer can't come too soon for Eric's family. Anyone who was there and who has spent years refusing to give my mom peace and refusing to give my dad peace before he died should be arrested and go to jail for obstructing justice, for conspiracy to commit murder. I would like it to be settled and to be over with and so that we can all go back and just live our life peacefully without revenge and without bitterness. And so, her son may finally rest in peace. Let's hope they finally get that chance. If you have any information, you can submit a tip at crimewatchdaily.com or call or text our toll-free tip line at 1-844-800-CRIME.